Hi everyone, welcome to another video of Coin Trends India. Today we have with me Abhinav, uh, who is the founder of Murmur and Windex, and we're going to talk about both of those apps as well as uh, you know about you and the city, the beautiful town of Bangalore. We are here for the Inblocks uh, Emerge Tech event, and now the event is over, and we are sitting here uh, with Abhinav. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks to you. Thanks to Abhinav for having me here the first. Inbox event uh, that I've uh, attended, and uh, thanks a lot for Abhi Banu for inviting me to talk as well. He's right there. See, he's, he's smoking right now. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about a little bit, little bit about Murmur and Windex both. Uh, let's start with Murmur. Maybe tell us more about it. Sure. So Murmur is basically uh, how you can make social media rewarding. Uh, we make creating social media 2.0, which enables. Um, you to solve for issues with current social media, such as uh, you know non-censorship or such as non-censorship resistance, uh, engineered uh, social media timelines, uh, social media turning towards more advertiser-focused rather than user-focused, and uh, issues with user data privacy. So, Mama solves for those issues. Okay, uh, can you quickly tell us how all those four points are being resolved uh, with Mama? So using three different methods. One is, uh, uh, like I said, making social media rewarding. Under rewarding, you have three aspects. One is um, uh, reputation. Uh, so we are creating an algorithm where you can create a trust score, what we call the MoMA trust score for every user. So creating an online, creating a reputation system for anonymous or pseudonymous accounts online on the internet. Uh, second is um, community driven moderation. How you can create a community such that the community moderates content on the platform. Third is uh, advertising, directly advertising to end users and rewarding end users for watching ads. Uh, but the advertising, uh, advertising will not be targeted as we have uh, in case of the other social media, right? Yeah, but that kind of revenue model would only realistically come in, in the next two years. Uh, after which, you know, you have a solid reputation system whereby you identify users based on their reputation. Right. Based on that, you can talk, you can kind of target ads to those particular users. Right, and I understand that Murmur is uh, on a blockchain and it's an EOS blockchain. Um, is that correct? Yeah, Murmur is on the EOS blockchain. We chose EOS because it's you can you have uh, account names that can be readable by people. You have fast transactions, so we put uh, okay account EOS. names for our user viewers. We just want to say that you know in in other blockchains, as you have uh, addresses, we can hear you. We can use a twelve digit or uh, sorry twelve character account name. So I can I can make a handle for myself, which is the same as I have on Twitter. That name ish that is uh, eleven characters, so yeah. I can have that right. Yeah, we have that. That name is one, for example. Yeah. But you have to have twelve. You have to have twelve. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So we have to have twelve. I did not know that. Um, right. So it's an it's an Android. It's an iOS. Uh, you can use. Web as well. It's on web as well, and uh, you get rewarded for using social media. You get rewarded for being a community uh, moderator. Um, right. So so it's a generally positive income generating social media. Yeah, I wouldn't say income for sure, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, rewarding social media. Rewarding social media, that would be the right word. And uh, what about one Windex? What is so are you pronouncing it right? Yeah, it's Windex. Uh, okay. Basically, uh, you know, we started out by creating a protocol that enables you to create a basket or a group of tokens. Uh, we release that onto the Ethereum uh, uh, one chain and Eon blockchains as of now. Uh, we then thought, okay, can we create a decentralized exchange? But then with all the regulations coming about, uh, we kind of pivoted that. Uh, we're moving towards uh, being an open source project, uh, aggregating trading solutions across different decentralized exchanges, uh, aggregating lending solutions, and aggregating staking solutions. And with our protocol, it enables you to create a basket or a group of tokens. So basically, like, uh, okay. with users always holding control of their funds. So hence, you know, by me, by open source, I mean put it on GitHub. Anybody can contribute. Uh, anybody can download and use the app. We, as a central party, don't hold any user data. Can we use it right now? Is there an alpha or a beta version? There is a beta already live, onedex.co. You can download the desktop application and you can and use it. Try it out. Okay, so there are two things that uh, I want to talk about from what you just said. One is uh, regulations, but uh, before that, um, actually, you know, let's start with regulations. Uh, what do you think about what is happening in India right now? So, I mean, uh, I would wait for actually the, a decision, solid decision to be made. I think right now it's still kind of floating. We're not yet sure 
where it's going or where it's not going. But uh, I'd wait for a solid decision to be made. Uh, I hope it is positive. Uh, for crypto, at the same time, regulation is required. So hence, uh, policing out uh, bad actors and uh, promoting, uh, I'm not promoting, but encouraging uh, crypto because, you know, like somebody had said, like I think JV had said earlier, you know, the crypto is by developers, software developers, people who are, you know, who are trying to do something unique and trying to innovate on new technology. I don't think that should be squashed, but there should be some regulation. So we'll wait to see actually what exactly comes out. Um, right, but you know there is there is this growing fear, and uh, I'm I'm going to be a devil's advocate right now, right? And the the fear that the government has is uh, crypto mid has the potential to uh, uh, you know take over the current financial system. And I was sitting in the court last in the last session, and uh, the RBI's advocate also raised the same concern. He was like, okay, RBI has taken this decision not because it is currently affecting the finance financial system. But it has the potential to affect the financial system, uh, which I sort of agree with. If 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 you know it grows that big, it can affect the current financial system. Or what do you think about it? You know, uh, I think you know maybe some kind of body such as like a SEBI or something that regulates stocks. The stocks also is, a, is an asset, right? It's yeah. stored and it's traded. Uh, a similar thing could be done for crypto if it's recognized as an asset. Depends on what is recognized as. Um, if it's recognized as a payment system, then maybe that fear could be bad. But I don't think that fear is there because you know, the common man, no common man uses crypto for anything right now. Other than, uh, Especially in India, because always the argument in the US has been, you know, banking the unbanked and uh, faster transactions because the wire transfers over there take a day or two or three sometimes. But we have like we have excelled the payment system, right? We have UPI, we have IMPS, we have RTGS. So we don't have that argument. I I I don't think that crypto is ever going to be a, a exactly. And there are banks even in the like remotest of villages. There are ATMs there. And yeah. No, there is no that, that argument is doesn't make any sense in India. It, yeah. it doesn't. It's just that I feel that when Bitcoin becomes really big, really huge, uh, it can become one go-to currency. But that. That's a uh, actually that's wishful thinking in my opinion to be very honest because Bitcoin was created with the idea of not having an authority over it, right? Um, now let's talk about the second part of what you were saying earlier. You know, Wandex being a decentralized uh, sort of exchange, we have plenty of decentralized exchanges, right? We have uh, de uh, decentralized finance, DeFi or DeFi as people are calling it. What is your opinion on that? Because for me, I'll tell you mine. Okay, for me, I don't think there is a need for me to, uh, you know, put a cryptocurrency of mine as a collateral and take 60% of uh, value of another token that I need for that moment as a loan. That doesn't make sense to me. But what do you think about that? Is it like? Uh, I think it's a very growing space. That's where we found we saw value in pivoting basically because. Uh, acting as an aggregator of lending or staking solutions, which are also coming up quite a bit, um, makes a lot of sense because uh, lending, like you said, maybe because you know there aren't say more than like three four assets which are really like people like okay might be willing to kind of lend on that. Um, and lending right now is mainly restricted also to Ethereum and ERC20 tokens. Once it kind of opens out using cross-chain protocols with uh, BTC and with potentially Ripple or other uh, tokens, then lending will start, make, start to make a lot of sense. Then staking also will start to make a lot of sense. If you want to stake, like Ethereum moves into proof of stake, you want to kind of stake, have a very easy UX where you can stake Ethereum. There are at least 10 different tokens, Tezos, EOS, all of which has staking functions. You want to stake, but right now staking is a headache. You have to download some wallet, you have to maintain private key here or there. It's too complicated. A simple one-click staking solution and across the board, I think that makes a lot of sense. So that's where we are moving towards. So this is, this is in your opinion, this is just the beginning and we're going towards a um, more easier way of uh, Finance, you know, staking and rewards and lending and, uh, and finance only if, you, if it is categorized as a financial asset. If it's not, it's then I would say just decentralized app. Yeah, <laughs> it's a dApp. Yeah. Let's talk about one one dice. You know, you pivoted, but eventually, do you see that uh, even your platform could be like a cross uh, interoperable? Uh, lending mechanism or staking mechanism? So we are looking at working on that, but not, I mean, it's going to take us at least six months to arrive at 
even, even a beta for cross chain based learning cross chain how do you manage all these products together because i i understand that there is one more non blockchain company that you have uh, right yeah so we uh, basically so chain flux is our development arm yeah uh, one x and one are uh, products built uh, from our development arm which has about 25 blockchain engineers wow okay uh, so and we build we are building a couple all of, of them here in bangalore so bangalore hyderabad and a uh, couple of people in singapore recently okay. so basically then enabling these products to be built and uh, also looking at other versions in which these this technology can be used uh, we are working with a couple of uh, governments in ua uh, to implement uh, educational certificates on blockchain and uh, land records on blockchain and a few other things and can you do that without a token very much it's all done without token it's, it's all done without a token yeah. right um all right so uh, tell us something about yourself you know before we finish like are you like a bangalorean or are you from so somewhere so i am uh, brought up in bangalore um something interesting about me i'm very into sports uh, yeah? i finished an ironman race uh, i do triathlons and you, uh, you've done ironman the one that uh, this guy main swimmer i think yeah. did like four x of an ironman okay so i did just one x but uh, <laughs> If it everything goes like Bitcoin, I'll also do like 10x of the Iron Man in like 10 years. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. So good luck with Iron Man and uh, one second, sorry. Um, I'm also I I I speak Kannada. Do you know that? Oh, Kannada. And then then I'll solve solve my matter. Oh, then I'm going to do it. So because I studied engineering here in Karnataka okay. in Davangere. Okay. Uh, it was long time ago, 10 years ago maybe. I finished uh, engineering. So okay. Okay. I have loved this place always uh, Bangalore it's uh, very close to my heart yeah. um, and I'm so happy to be here and I'm so happy that we could uh, do this interview thank you so much for your time sure thanks a lot man and good luck I with everything yeah, that thank you are so doing much. right thank would you, you like to tell my folks to subscribe to the channel of course please subscribe to coin crunch i think they have a link or something yeah sure. there is a subscription button there is right a subscription there. button here so you, you can know? subscribe uh, And also follow Naimesh. You know, you can follow him on Twitter. You can follow Coin Crunch on Twitter. You'll yes, see please do. A lot of update, latest and most updated news on crypto. Yeah, we focus on things that nobody else talks about. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to count to one, two, three, and we'll say my catchphrase, which is J Blockchain. Okay. So one, two, three. J Blockchain. J -Blockchain.